serves as Father Joseph, MIC, the director of the Association of Marian Helpers and as head of Marian Press, located on the grounds of the National Shrine of the Divine Mercy in Stockbridge, Massachusetts. So please put your hands together for Father Chris Aylard. Thank you so much. It's an honor uh, to be here. We're very grateful, and I thank the speakers and uh, Deacon Don for allowing me to come today on short notice. You know, it's very clear how God works in our lives, and he shows us sometimes a bigger picture. And when I was ordained a priest, um, I prayed for discernment to know how God is using myself and other people in his plan. Now, you've heard me talk a lot about God's chosen people currently today being Poland and the Philippines. A spark will come from Poland to prepare the world for his final coming. And the Philippines, the little four-foot Filipino women that are fearless in spreading divine mercy around the world. Those are the people God is using today in many ways. But what has become very clear to me is Ireland is walking, I am convinced, and you are going to hear me say this after I was praying on the plane, and after hearing all these prayers over there on the side just the last few minutes. There's no question you are following as a nation, the nation of Israel. Israel was the original chosen people. Israel fell away. Israel went through a dark night of the soul. The exact same thing is happening to Ireland. But there is hope. The hope is right here in divine mercy. Now let me explain this. A few months ago I did a talk on YouTube that you can find online. It's called The Dark Night of the Soul. And in The Dark Night of the Soul, God gives a person or a nation or a family. Because remember, the Old Testament goes from an individual to a family to a nation. Each and every one of you are part of a family and a nation. Israel was chosen for a very special task. They were chosen people does not mean you're favored above everybody else. A chosen people means God is giving you a task. Do you know what the task given to Ireland was? Anybody here? What was the task given to Ireland by God? From the year 500 through the upper Middle Ages, Ireland saved the church and saved Western civilization. Ireland has played an incredibly important role in God's plan of salvation. Now, what does the evil one do? The evil one will pick and target those people that are most used by God. Look what happened to Israel. Israel was targeted by the evil one. They fell away. Then they went through the dark night of the soul. They went through the Holocaust. They went through extreme suffering to be purified, to be prepared to bring back to God, and it will happen. Ireland. 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 The nation that saved the church and saved Western civilization is now being attacked. I have traveled all over the world. I have spoken in countless nations. I have never heard what I have just heard that you are going through. Yes, we are suffering in the United States I've been to many nations and there's a lot of suffering. I've never heard what I have just heard. 
That means God is purifying your people. And he's got a huge plan for you. I am convinced of this. In the meantime, the evil one is going to try to step in. Detach you from your roots. Make you forget history. Make you forget the need for the church. Make you forget all of this. This is what the evil one does. What is the basis of the woke movement? What is going on in Ireland even worse than the United States? The first thing that the woke movement wants to do is to destroy a nation by erasing its history. Especially its Christian history. In America, they're trying to destroy us, calling us all systematic racists. Untrue. I can tell you, I've been from coast to coast. I've spoken in 42 of the 50 states. We do not have systematic racism. But we are told we do. We are told that they keep opening the wounds of slavery. You know where the word slave comes from? Anybody? The word slave comes from the word Slav, S-L-V. You know who the Slavs are? Me. Croatian, Czech, Polish. These are the Slavs. You know why slavery is called slaves? Because the Slavs were the most enslaved people in the Middle Ages. But yet our nation in America, they're trying to destroy it by saying race warfare. In Ireland, Irish history is being erased because of your union with the church. You who saved Western civilization. How? How did the Irish save Western civilization? You know, there's a great book by Thomas Cahill. And I want to quote a few things here because you may not, you may know this, you may not. All right. After the collapse of Rome and the start of the Middle Ages, it was Ireland. Ireland that saved the world. The Irish monks are responsible for preserving all the ancient texts and how these efforts that they did are the only way that ancient manuscripts survived. We would know nothing today about our ancient history of the world and the ancient writings of the philosophers and the theologians if it wasn't for the Greek monks, uh, the uh, Irish monks. Now, St. Patrick, your key. He played a key role in missionary help. He came from England, though. And he was very critical, very important in ministry of missionary work. Patrick was responsible for, guess what? Ending Irish slavery. The church. Reducing intertribal warfare and crime. Establishing convents and monasteries. Reminding the Irish people that they all could live as honest, pious, people without war or bloodshed. Now here's what's interesting. Instead, you can live an obedient life to God. And how do you live an obedient life to God through his church? This is the reason Christianity was accepted in Ireland without any brutality at the time. Now later, there did come brutality, but not in the beginning. In this book, it explains how Patrick gave the Irish people a purpose which led you as a nation and led the Irish monks to looking for something better. All right, monastic areas, they became the centers of academia, culture, prosperity. Everyone worked towards a better country, a better world. Ancient, classical, and even pagan texts were brought to the world by the Irish. Thanks to their passion for learning, you, your ancestors, took these books and then started making books. The knowledge you gave to the world across all of Europe, to all of the world, to dischanted people. You transferred this love of reading and knowledge to the others who had no access to books. You, the Irish, mainly by the Irish monks, saved Western civilization. Now, Western civilization is on the brink of being destroyed. It's being destroyed religiously by attacks from Islam. It's being destroyed 
Theoretically, in the schools, it's being destroyed by secular society. We call upon the Irish again. The world, and if you think, well, I'm just one little person sitting in my chair, there's nothing I can do. That's exactly what the cloistered monks of Ireland said a thousand years ago. Ireland's proud legacy of missionary outreach was amazing. You know, Britain and Europe owe a huge debt of gratitude to Ireland. Do you know in the evangelization, Irish, you people, the Peregrini Pro Christo, Pilgrims for Christ, the Irish left their native country to spread Christianity around the world. From 550 A.D. to 1300, the Irish monks, driven by missionary zeal, left their dearly beloved homeland, right here, Ireland, and went to Britain and the continent all throughout Europe, bringing Christianity to pagans. After the collapse of the Roman Empire, they brought the faith to the pagans. They save the church. You know who your patrons are here in Ireland? Who are your three patrons? St. Patrick? St. Columba? Now, who was St. Columba? St. Columba left Ireland in 563 and established a monastery on the island of Ionia, now Scotland. Scotland which became an important center for evangelization. St. Aidan founded the monastery at Lindisfarne in England and preached the gospel to the Anglo-Saxons, nobility and the poor. St. Columbanus established monasteries in France and Italy. He went, this is really interesting, everybody. Did you know this? St. Columbanus he crisscrossed the continent of Europe so many times that his love of the road now makes him the patron saint of motorcycles. He's a patron saint of motorcycles. Saint Difna is a patron saint of the mentally ill and survivors of incest and sexual assault. I heard so many of those prayers here today. Are you praying to her? Are you praying? All right, Pope Benedict wrote to you Pope Benedict wrote to you just a few years ago and said Catholics of Ireland have proved an enormous force for good at home and abroad. From the 16th century under Henry VIII, Catholics in Ireland endured a long period of persecution <clears throat> during which they struggled to keep the flame of faith alive in dangerous times. That's what you're going through right now. St. Oliver Plunkett, the martyred archbishop is most famous example of this host of courageous sons and daughters of Ireland were willing to lay down their life, the ultimate sacrifice. After your Catholic emancipation in the 1800s, the church then became free to grow. Families, countless individuals had preserved the faith that times of a lot of trial and Irish Catholicism in the 19th century was reborn. The church, listen to this, we in the United States, I am an American. But when I look back at my growth, my education, every single place there was an Irish priest. We owe a thank you. The church provided education from Ireland, especially for the poor. The Irish society contributed to help places around the world among the fruits of the new Evangelization of the Irish was, guess what? Catholic schools, which are in so much trouble right now. Rise in vocations. Generations of missionary priests, brothers, sisters, nuns. They left their homeland and they went around the world. Many dioceses in Africa, America, Australia benefited from the Irish, from the Irish clergy, the nuns and the brothers who preached the gospel. <clears throat> form schools, universities, clinics, hospitals that serve not just Catholics, but the community and the poor overall. In almost every family in Ireland, there is someone in your family, an aunt, 
an uncle, a son or daughter, a grandparent who had given her his or her life to the church. No other country can say this. Not even Poland or the Philippines. I have stated before, this is true, absolutely. I believe God has a mission right now for Poland and the Philippines. He's using them to spread divine mercy. But the ones that were chosen before this was the Irish. And it occurred to me on this plane flight last night. As I was praying to God, I was like, Lord, please give me this wisdom. And it, it, it came in so strong to tell my people, to tell the Irish, my people, that I love them, but they have turned away from me. They must go through the dark night of the soul, just like my people Israel. Israel turned from God. Israel inv invoked pagan gods we are doing it now the irish have rejected the church they have voted in for the first time you're one of the first nations in the history of the world to vote in not legislate in like america we were forced abortion with roe v wade now it's voting in in the states but one of the first countries to vote in abortion and gay marriage by the people was ireland you're one of the first. Now, God is not going to disown you. God is not going to cast you away from himself. God is not going to hate you. He is going to love you. But he's going to say, you're in the dark night. You must be purified. You must be brought back to me. And if not you, who? Because your children, they may be lost from the faith. Your spouse may not be here doesn't believe in the faith. Your siblings may not be here. They don't believe in God anymore. They don't go to church anymore. God has chosen you, you here in these seats to be the, 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 the recall of Ireland back to him. If every one of you, if every one of you heeds this call to come back to God through his church in the grace of the sacraments, you can save the soul of your loved ones. Not that the grace doesn't come from you. It comes from God, but he uses you as a tool. I am convinced that Israel, when they left God and he let them go through the dark night of the soul, how the suffering they went through, the tremendous suffering like the Holocaust, is to prepare them to come back to God. Israel is the original example of that. Ireland is right behind. And right now, God says, my people, Ireland, have left me. I am going to Poland and the Philippines to spread this message, but I've never forgotten my people, Ireland. You were before Poland. You were before the Philippines. God used you from 500 to 1500 for a 1,000 years to save the church. You can do it again. You can do it again. I am absolutely convinced of this. You are a chosen people. If it wasn't for Ireland, we would have no sacraments. Do you know confession? When you go to confession, do you know who you have to thank for the grace that you don't have to stand up here and publicly announce to everybody what you did? That's the way confession used to be. Confession used to be you have to stand up <clears throat> and publicly announce. It was the Irish monks that gave us the sacraments as we have them today. The basis in scripture, the perfection through the church. The Irish monks and through the support of the Irish people knew their mission. And their mission saved Western civilization which is now in deep jeopardy again. We need your help. I and a select group of priests in the United States have been talking about this. We've been talking about, yes, God's using Poland and the Philippines right now, but without the Irish, it isn't going to happen. We need you. And this is why God has you in this seat. 
Well, Father, what can I do? I'm sick. I'm homebound. Do you know if you do nothing else but pray a divine mercy chaplet every day and offer it for your nation of Ireland, that that will work? Do you realize that if you can do nothing, you don't even have a voice anymore, you can barely talk, or you're so sick you can't even get out of bed, you can still be used by offering up your suffering to God? Do you realize that all those prayers I heard over there was becoming so clear to me through God's grace that what is happening is God is telling you to offer this up, your sufferings. You're in the dark night as a nation. We have to offer up our sufferings back to God to bring your sons and daughters back to the church, your brothers and your sisters. I'm convinced of this. God has a plan for Ireland, but he can't do it without you. People say, well, God can do everything. Of course he can. But did God do choose people? He always has. He chose the apostles, and he's choosing you to go back to the roots of Ireland. You did it before. Your great, 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 great grandparents did it. You can do it. We need you. The roots of the United States are not Catholicism. The roots of the United States are fundamental, fundamentalism and Protestantism. We're not going to do it. You've got to go to the nation with the purest roots that are Catholic. The Philippines didn't become Catholic to the 1500s. Poland didn't become Catholic to the 900s. You know when Ireland became Catholic? Centuries before that. You are the original. They, can't, they call France the first daughter of the church. You were Catholic before France. You were the first Catholic born of God. Please don't drop this ball. And again, it doesn't mean you have to go get ordained tomorrow or that you have to enter a convent tomorrow. You can do it by offering up your daily life, your trials, your tribulations, the fact that, Father, there's got to be more to life than getting up and, and making breakfast and getting my husband off to work and myself off to work and getting the kids taken care of and then going off to work, getting yelled up by my boss fighting traffic, trying to get home, and then my children will practice the faith, and then I got to make dinner, then I got to go shopping, and then I got to help them with their homework, then I have an argument with my spouse, then I got to pay bills. There's got to be more to life than this. <laughs> the bottom line is that is exactly how God can use you. You offer every bit of that up. You pray for your nation, Israel, Ireland, Poland, the Philippines, America. You pray for all of them. But I'm going to task you most of all to pray for your homeland. To pray that Ireland accepts this role that God has given you. The history of Catholic America is an Irish story. Immigrants came over, putting their stamp on churches, building churches during the Depression. It was the Irish who made the church grow. A lot of people say this. The Irish were the most powerful ethnic group in the Catholic Church in the United States during the wave of immigration from the mid-1800s to the early 1900s. Irish clergy took the lead in building immigrant churches and populations. Women religious from Ireland, like the Sisters of Mercy, were part of this immigration wave. Every church in America seemed to have some kind of an Irish tie. The Basilica of the Assumption in Baltimore. The Cathedral Basilica of St. Peter's and Paul in Philadelphia. I just met somebody from Philadelphia. And of course, St. Patrick's Cathedral in New York City. These are all Irish built. For the Irish, this is what... A guy by the name of Christopher Shannon said, he's a college professor, for the Irish, the parish <clears throat> was the center of their lives and the church building was the center of the parish. The church was far more than just a place to go to mass on Sunday. It was a center full of activities from devotional societies and charitable or charity organizations to sports and recreations. Many parishes had parochial schools. Irish men and women from all walks of life donated to the church, 
railroad workers, canal diggers. They built the churches. They started collecting photographs of stained glass windows donated by the Irish to the churches of the United States, and they were floored. They were flabbergasted. Almost all the stained glass windows in the churches of the United States were donated by the Irish. Shannon, this professor, suggested that we should learn from this. And he said, tell the Irish, so I am here. I was sent by God. Tell the Irish, a desire to commit yourselves, make your parishes once again the center of your life. This is what the message is. Do you know that Ireland was once the most Catholic country in the world? You were. You got to get back. The Irish Constitution opens with the words in the name of the Most Holy Trinity, from whom, from whom is all authority. And it continues with reference to, quote, obligations to our divine Lord Jesus Christ, who sustained our fathers through centuries of trial. You're going through the greatest trial right now. Pray to your saints, you got so many. Pray to your ancestors. In Ireland, the church, not the state, is supposed to run the education system. Until recently, this has changed. Yeah. You know, in 1984, 90% of Irish Catholics went to Mass every week. In 2011, 18%. 18%. It's a massive cultural shift. Prayers, pray to St. Bridget, the patron saint of Ireland, along with St. Patrick and St. Columba. You know her story? I only got two minutes left. Three. When she was working with the lepers, they ran out of beer. And beer was a source of hydration and nourishment because fresh water was sometimes polluted, right? Beer offered really a germ-free alternative, right? And she answered the leper's prayer by turning the water that they bathed in, the bath water, into beer. And not just any beer, but genuinely brilliant beer, better than Guinness. And it was enjoyed even by the priests. And she wrote a poem offering a link of beer to God. And even St. Patrick, I'll finish with him. You know, his feast day is on March 17th. Why? Because they believe that's the day he died. And you know, it used to be a solemnity, a holy day of obligation in Ireland. Is it still? Beautiful. Keep that up. You know, his dad was a deacon. His dad was a deacon and his grandfather was a priest. Now, Patrick was not a believer. So even your children who had relatives that were priests and religious and may not be believers today can become a St. Patrick. At 16, he was captured by, guess what? Irish pirates who took him as a slave. They brought him to Ireland. He lived there for six years and he escaped. He returned to his family. He walked 200 miles and got on a ship, went back to Britain. There he walked 28 days with no food. And after becoming a cleric, he returned to Ireland then as a bishop. And he was a Christian missionary and a bishop in Ireland. But although not from Ireland, he was from Roman Britain. <clears throat> the point is, even Ireland was saved by missionaries. Now we need you. He baptized thousands of people and ordained priests to lead the new Christian communities. He converted wealthy women, some who became nuns. He also dealt with the sons of kings, converting them. In pagan Ireland, three was a significant number, and the Irish had many triple deities. This is why he, some say he used the shamrock, others say it was, that's a legend, but he taught the faith with zeal. Having even no snakes, not a lot of snakes in Ireland, gave rise to the legend that he banished them, right? And so lots of legends. 
But in that, you know, Patrick explains that the Lord had mercy on his youth and ignorance. You must pray, God have mercy on our youth of Ireland. And he afforded, God afforded uh, Patrick the chance to be forgiven and converted. Pray your children are forgiven and converted. And he said, we, yes, yes, yes. And even then, St. Patrick said it was the mercy of God that brought him back. And guess what, everybody? Tomorrow, we are going to talk about the mercy of God. So at 1030 tomorrow, we invite you to come tomorrow. Even with the sins of the past, even with the horrible things that happened in the laundries and other things that the media loves to jump on, God's mercy is greater. We don't leave Jesus because of Judas. Did we have some bad priests and some bad nuns? Yes, but you don't leave Jesus because of Judas. Ireland, absolutely. And I got so much more to say, but I'm out of time. But I'll tell you this. You are a chosen people. You are a special people in the eyes of God. There is no way you would not be chosen by God if God didn't give you the task to save the church and Western civilization. Guess what, everybody? We got to do it again. And we got to look to Ireland. God bless you. Thank you, everybody. God bless you. Thank you. God bless Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you, uh, uh, Deacon. I, I apologize for taking your time, but I'm going to be signing books over at the Veritas table. Um, please, just real quick. Everybody, if you haven't gotten the book, Understanding Divine Mercy, this tells you everything you need to know about what divine mercy is and how to get the graces. I wrote this book also on airplanes, and, and sadly, we are facing suicides, a lot of suffering, not just suicide. This book is not just about suicide. It's about any kind of suffering. You all are going through it in Ireland. I advise you, please pick up a copy of the book, and I'll tell you what, you can't afford it. You can't pay for it. I'll get it for you, okay? So please come see us at the table. God bless you. Thank you. So now we've been truly blessed this morning. That was a message to Ireland here. And we're the messengers. We're the remnant messengers to bring that message out. And it's further. And you might find this hard to believe, but you know, with Father Billy this morning, Father Billy Swan laid out the the theme of the weekend for us, and then Father Hayden really put it into into nuts and bolts what we're to do as the remnant, and then Father Chris came along and really really nailed it and hammered it home. So, and you know, none of them spoke to each other before this, but all the talks integrated one into the other, and. Our reaction was, well, look, when they say, well, what do you want me to talk about? We said, let the Holy Spirit tell you. And the Holy Spirit definitely has given us that message through our three speakers this morning. So well done, Father Chris. And now I'm very conscious that there's a whole thousands of people watching on over the Internet from North America and all over the world and indeed in our own country here in Ireland. So for the change in schedule that Father Jim was to start at 10 past 12, so we back to half 12. So now we're actually running slightly behind, but not to worry. So our next, Robbie is going to give us a, a tune. And then after that, I'll introduce Father James Blunt.